Hello everyone and welcome back to Elevate Her podcast. Today I have with me Alexandra Petrake, who is a 24 years old hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. Welcome Alexandra. Thank you Anna, thank you so much for having me. It's such, it's such a pleasure to have you on as I know you're, you're so amazing and you have so many <laughs> things you. going on right now. So I would like to start by asking you to tell us more about your story, your background and what are you currently working on? Okay. Uh, okay. So I became a psychotherapist when I was about 22 years, 22 years old. That's when I graduated. My story is a little bit, mm, I would say, different because I started my um, my formation as a psychotherapist uh, during my college, which is not the most common thing to do. Most people wait until they finish college and then they start that. But I don't know, I felt like I had a vision and I went for it, even though it came with a little bit of a pushback at the beginning. Uh, and if you want, I can uh, I can course. tell you that story. <laughs> um, right now, I am working on quite a lot of things. Um, so I'm obviously having um, like psychotherapy sessions every single day, at least two or three per day. Uh, and I also have two courses that I worked um, that I worked on and I put like basically all of my knowledge and experience that I've put together throughout um, throughout the years and they came out in these really um, really interesting courses that people seem to like very much because they also have the experience of the group they have the experience of asking questions of receiving uh, information and applying that information into exercises that um, that are quite practical I love that mm -hmm. and I love that you're kind of non-formal psychotherapist because yeah. when you usually think about like someone who's doing therapy I think it's a bit scary in a way yeah. and you don't know what to expect but you are just so not like in yeah. like everybody else and this is what I love a lot about thank what you're you. doing <laughs> thank you well I know for a fact that people will cry in therapy so I might as well make them laugh a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I think it makes like um, young generations be more open to yeah. um, to healing I and... feel like they are naturally though okay because um, even though they don't come to therapy I see them accessing my content that I put on Instagram because I have this belief and I know what it's like to let's say like be young and not have money to go to therapy mm -hmm. or not afford that thing so that's why everything I make I try to make it as affordable as possible and accessible as possible for everyone because I can see young people being very um, eager for this healing information like what do I do with myself like I want to do better with myself how can I do that so I feel like they're open in, in a natural way to that mm -hmm. I love that you're making such a big impact in the world <laughs> you're you're such a light <laughs> thank you thank you so much yeah as well and first of all I want, would like to know what was the challenge that you faced and you had to overcome in the beginning of your of your journey as you mm. said that you you are so young so I think many people nowadays uh, either regarding entrepreneurship or any yeah. other industry face a lot of challenges in the beginning mm. so I'm curious to know what was yours and how you overcame it well the biggest challenge I would say uh, it's doubting yourself and I feel like that applies for many many people uh, so I was going to tell you about that um, that story. So in college, I had this um, professor that I really, really admire. Like I admired, I don't know, everything about her, like her attitude, her knowledge, the way she carried herself and everything. And uh, she was also a professor at a formation school. For, for those who don't know, in order to become a therapist, you have to do like um, two years of, uh, sorry, three years of college and then two more years of like a certain 
formation school on a certain type of therapy. So I really wanted to apply for the school where she was um, teaching at. And I thought to myself, like, oh my God, she's going to see me here and she's going to be so excited that I really like admire her and I'm going to tell her all these things. And then I got there and the second she saw me, like she probably recognized me from class. And I would have thought in the beginning that that's a good thing because she would know that I'm a good student and I'm, I'm involved in her classes. But it was quite the opposite. She saw me and she got like right out of the room. I don't know if that would have been like, um, I don't know, like an impartial thing for her to do. or I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I, um, I felt some type of way about that. And then her colleagues and the board basically told me, like, even though your application is really good and what you said in the application is really good, I feel like we're too young to start our school. So try again next time. Wow. (laughs) And I don't know, like, I did not want to take a no for an answer. Like, and this is what I would like to say to many people. Like, if you feel you have it in you, even though other people don't see that in you, don't take no for an answer. Oh, if you feel like you still have to work on yourself, then okay, take that no, take a step back, work on yourself and come back later. But if you feel like you have it in you, then don't take that no for an answer because many people are projecting something, their fears, their insecurities, there's something onto you. Mm -hmm. So maybe that person would have said, oh, at 21 or 20, I did not know nothing. So for sure, she doesn't know anything also. So don't take that no for an answer. And then I applied for another school, like in the same um, range of um, applications. And um, I got into the other one. So I became a hypnotherapist. And I feel like that was for the better because now many people are looking forward to work in this type of way with hypnosis because it goes like into a deeper state of healing. I love that. So (laughs) it actually... A bad situation turned into yeah. into your favor. Yeah, but you have to make it that way yeah. because it could have gone. You know, I, I like to say this thing, this thing where you can see the future in possibilities. So that would have been a crossroad for me, where I I could have mm-hmm. taken away or the yeah. other. So yeah, yeah. W- what I think um, about like your story uh, is that you did and you took this decision because you were. You were confident in your powers and in yourself and you knew yeah. that you couldn't take a no for an answer. Yeah. Because if you wouldn't have that confidence in yourself, mm-hmm. I believe that you would just give up from like the beginning yeah. and you would take that yeah, no true. for an answer. I, I couldn't even say it's com- or at least I didn't think it was confidence at the time. I just felt more so it was like just courage because I always say to people not all of us are born with straight up confidence or not all of us are raised in a certain way where the confidence we come up in the world with is um, nurtured but all of us have courage and that's something that cannot be taken away from us I love that I love that but uh, if we have the conf- the, the courage Mm -hmm. to do the things why so many people are not going after their dreams and Mm -hmm. are not actually taking the steps um well because of doubting yourself and because also feeling this emotion of inadequacy and fear okay so sometimes you would think other people know better for you so you would Mm -hmm. you would take that you know if you say to someone Mm, many times enough that you're like this you're like this at some point you're gonna start conforming to that if you're not Mm self-aware enough yeah yeah I get that so how can someone who um, right now is just believing more in others than in themselves um, how can they build that confidence step by step and Mm -hmm. uh, getting to a point where they they just truly believe in their powers okay So it's really important how your inner dialogue goes and also how you apply that into experience. You don't have to start with uh, with big things, but, you know, like with the little things where you feel like you're listening more to other people just for once make this. I don't know, packed with yourself like this one time. I'm just going to try to do it my way. See what happens. 
you know and then you're gonna start getting mo- most likely positive results and you're gonna start liking that a lot so yeah so in a way treat it as an experiment and yes. not putting that much pressure on yourself yeah. just i don't know trying and see yeah. what happens <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and it's fine if you don't get it right the first time you didn't walk perfectly the first time you didn't know how to eat by yourself perfectly the first time so Mm -hmm. it's like in the human um normal process of learning for you to mess up a few times and that's okay yeah 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 i get it so um at elevate her uh, our mission is to empower young women to build the confidence in themselves so they can take action on their dreams um so i'm curious to know from your uh, from your background as a psychotherapist, mm. why do women experience a low self-esteem? Okay. Should I be like that <laughs> classic <laughs> cliche psychotherapist and tell you it comes from childhood? <laughs> Just be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the truth is a little bit does come from childhood, but I love this research I think it's like a pretty recent research that shows that even in the in the families where we see that everything seems very very good like those parents raise young healthy adults even in those families uh, we can see that only 30 percent of the child's needs are met okay so that leaves 70 percent up to you and what you do with it so, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so it's true. A part does come from childhood and childhood experience can cause some, I call them like fragmentation, causes some fragmentation within you where you don't feel as a whole anymore. You feel like you have multiple parts. You know when you say, oh, a part of me wants this and a part of me wants that. Or yeah. A part of me feels like yeah. this. and a part. Yeah, so it causes that. So this is what negative thoughts are. It's not all of you. It's just a little part of you. That's what a fear is. It's not all of you. It might feel like all of you if you let it be that way and it will overwhelm you and you, and you will feel like all that you are is that fear all, all, mm-hmm. or all that you are is that negative thought. But you have to come to the realization that you're not the person thinking those things. You're the person hearing those things. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, okay. So, um, how can someone actually overcome the fears and acknowledge them in the first place, so they can mm-hmm. become what they're meant to be? Okay, um, I'm gonna. Um, I want to say a part from this book we both read. If okay. you remember, it's called Big Magic. Oh yeah, I love the book. <laughs> and if you remember. Uh, the writer says at some point that she has a a letter for fear. And I love that letter so much. And she's saying that fear can come along on this journey called life. But um, the writer says to her fear, uh, my dear fear, you can come along, but you cannot touch the radio. You cannot... Um, I don't know, control anything, you cannot detour, you cannot choose the destination, you cannot tell me when to stop. Uh, You can feel whatever way you want to feel, and that's okay. But most of all, you cannot drive. So fear is never a message that you should stop. It's only a message that that's when you need to use courage. And by using that courage, you will build up confidence. Because I feel like confidence is nothing else but courage used multiple times. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) I I think you put it just perfectly. And the message from the book is just so, so empowering. And so for the listeners, it's about Mm -hmm. uh, the book Big Magic uh, written by Elizabeth Gilbert. And Mm -hmm. we both read it. And for me personally, it changed my life Mm -hmm. because I've experienced fear like so deeply and it just mm-hmm. stopped me for so many years to go mm-hmm. after my dreams. And uh, I realized that last year when I was so, so afraid that I, I was like even afraid of my shadow, I think. Yeah. And in that moment, I realized that, oh my God, I, I just, I'm so fearful of 
everything. Like mm. I just couldn't speak in front of the people or mm. go after and start my business. And it, there were so, so yeah. many thoughts I had in my mind. And what I'd done was when I was in my uh, journey in South Africa, my only uh, wish for that one month there was to just tackle every fear that I've got, at least yeah. four, to find out at first what were they like mm -hmm. because i i know that i i feared a lot yeah. of things but i couldn't name them mm -hmm. and that made me even more scared of wow how, how how many fears i have and what's stopping me actually yeah and what i found was that i was so focused on what other would think of me first of all and just um having those people in my mind couldn't let me just go after and do it. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think this, like this fears story um, should be, I don't know, maybe an awakening for the people listening mm -hmm. to just try to ask themselves w what am I feeling or yeah. what am I fearing actually? Yeah. Um, well, you will always see that somehow the deepest, deepest, deepest cause of fear is losing connection with something or someone because we have this design for connection and sometimes we, like our subconscious mind takes it to such an extreme where we stop everything or we, we block ourselves from everything just to not lose that connection, just mm -hmm. to not be in disagreement with someone or with someone's opinion or with society's opinion or something like that. So just to not be in that disapproval yeah. of someone else's mm, connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I also like to refer to fear as uh, in opposed to follow your dreams, to follow your fear, yeah. because... I think that our biggest dreams uh, lie behind our, our biggest fears yeah. because this is what was in my case because I wanted to do so many things, but I couldn't because I had the fear. So I had first yeah. to follow the fear and then the dream yeah. came true. In yeah, a way. that's true. Yeah. So I always say that behind every emotion is a message. So your job is not to like let that emotion fully control you but more so is to try to see what's the message of that emotion just straight up ask it like don't don't be afraid you will see that it'll answer you back so usually the message of fear is that you need to use your courage yeah yeah <laughs> exactly but how can how can someone acknowledge they have the fears uh because in my case it was just trying to understand how I react to, mm -hmm. to different situations, but maybe there are many more that I didn't experience. Um, so basically you're asking me, how do you know you feel yeah. the fear? Yeah. Well, mm, you're constantly thinking about what other people would think. You're postponing, you're avoiding, um, you're... Sometimes even lack of motivation could be a, f a fear of something. Oh, I love that. Because <laughs> so many people lack the motivation and ask me, uh, Anna, what should I do to be as motivated as you are? I don't know. Just <laughs> find your purpose. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes when you feel this lack of motivation and you're like mm, procrastinating, yeah. it always means you're avoiding something. And if mm -hmm. you're avoiding something, it means you're afraid of that thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that thing could not even be something outside of you. It could be something inside of you. When I did my first, um, my first online course, Soul Sessions, I avoided to do that thing for almost a year and a half because... To start the course? Yes, because the voice in my head was so critical of myself if I would make any little tiny mistake then I just didn't want to encounter that voice anymore so I just <laughs> didn't do it yeah yeah because obviously you would be afraid that you would constantly live with someone in your head that would criticize you at every little move you exactly make. exactly it was it happened the same for me last year when I was just such in a 
a depressive mood mm-hmm. like all the time and I was judging mm-hmm. myself completely every day that if I would do something and it wouldn't be perfect and it, at its yeah. best I know that I would criticize myself so much so I would yeah. rather just not do it yeah <laughs> yeah But thank God that you just started the course and now so many people are taking advantage of it and healing. Oh, and I did it with a shaky voice the first time. Like I was drinking from that um, glass of water every two minutes and it was (laughs) so embarrassing. But I said, hey, I'm sorry, I'm kind of nervous. Probably you are too, but probably tomorrow I'll be better. And tomorrow was a little bit better. And then by the fourth day, I don't know, I felt like I was in my environment. And that's what I was meant to do. Like, I just didn't even think about it for a moment. You just have to repeat it a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How would it be if you wouldn't just go for it? I don't know. I would have still... (laughs) I don't know. So many people would cry right now. (laughs) And would be depressed. Yeah, And not healed. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, if you have fears, just (laughs) go after them because you're making the universe and the world a favor. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Love that. Um, The next question that I want to ask you is talking a bit about the feminine energy Mm -hmm. um, because it's something that I've saw, especially in myself, that I didn't know how to... Mm -hmm. Uh, just a- access it and I feel like so many uh, females and young women nowadays yeah. um, are, are pushing themselves so hard to do and to achieve and to become yeah. that best version of themselves that they just mm-hmm. forget about their inner power and their inner yeah. self so how can can someone access their feminine power okay That's a very good question. Um, So it goes like this. We can see or we can understand better this energy in the form of attitudes. So you cannot really see the energy. You can feel it, but you can see the behavior or the attitude of how it translates into your day-to-day life. So usually feminine, like healthy feminine energy um it's very soft it's still powerful but in a different way it's more mm, i would say it's more nurturing in in that way it is powerful uh also feminine energy has this thing of seduction of grace of warmth around it so Basically, what you can do to access your feminine energy is to look at those attitudes and see how you can implement them in your life and where you need them. Because sometimes you, as a woman, would need the masculine energy because all of us, as a woman, you have a little bit of masculine energy within you. And as a man, you also have a little bit of feminine energy within you because that's the way you can understand the other uh, gender Mm -hmm. Yeah. just by containing it a little bit. So sometimes in order to, I don't know, do something that requires uh, like a masculine attitude, for example, like let's say you're a female that works in an environment where you need to be more mm, strong or more more focused, well, while feminine energy is more uh, wavy, more is looking for the beautiful side of things instead of the practical and things like that so sometimes you need different resources and attitudes in different situations so you should just ask yourself where in my life do I want to experience more femininity in my relationship with my body in my relationship with food with my friends with my partner with even with work sometimes your work if like I don't know you're an artist could require more um looking for the beautiful side of things instead of the more focused part Mm -hmm. of things yeah and what if uh you have 
too much masculine energy in yourself mm. because you've been pushing yourself so hard since you are a little mm -hmm. child. I'm referring to me here. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what you can do to uh, balance the masculine and, and the feminine energy on a daily basis so you can actually attract partners that are mm -hmm. a fit for you? Okay, so um, first of all, you got to look at these attitudes. You can easily find them like online if you want a list of all the feminine energy attitudes um, and you can basically look hey I want to experience more of this and then try to act out as if and that way you can implement that more in your life and also the fact that you have masculine energy is really good the question is how can I use it in the aspects or areas of my life where I really need it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes masculine energy could mean you need protection. So in that sense, you got to look at your life and see where or how do you perceive you need that protection? Because sometimes it could be good and useful to have protection from yourself towards yourself. That's a really mm -hmm. good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it'll require you to be more open and that's like the feminine side of things yeah so you just gotta basically adapt to the situation it's not that you have more or less it's just how and when it is used yeah uh, I, I acknowledge that I, I was I was having more of a masculine energy when I was re I realized I was attracting partners in my life that weren't matching mm -hmm. um, my expectations because mm -hmm. I was kind of the dominant one all the yeah. time. Uh, so I, I wouldn't find someone who is more dominant than me because I was yeah. the one. Um, so that was actually the moment when I, I felt uh, too, too much um, of the masculine. And what I did was to try and go more into and the creative side mm -hmm. um, yeah. and write and paint and try to be more in flow mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to ask you if there are other things that yeah. someone can do to just balance well of course in this example that you um, that you just gave me with the fact that you know I felt like other people were like were not mm, strong enough or like let's just say I couldn't feel like if I was in a car I couldn't feel like I could trust that person to drive yeah it's normal it's basically normal for yeah. you to feel like you need to be the one to take charge but at the same time you gotta question yourself am I distrusting this person for a reason and if so that reason can be talked about and solved mm -hmm. or it's just the nature of this person and that's just how this person is in that person doesn't want to change so I need to withdraw myself from from the situation because mm, sometimes the way energy mm, goes it just compensates for the other mm -hmm. so it's it just makes sense that you would feel like you're the one who needs to take charge if you would see that the other person doesn't but at the same time you could have someone that just doesn't realize that they do so just a conversation or two would yeah. be enough yeah yeah, I get that. And then you could be like, oh, okay, I can relax now and I can let this person take charge and then maybe later I can take charge. So it's like a like a dance, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, talking about like partners and relationships, mm -hmm. um, I think that when you are in that state where you don't actually see your worth and your value, um, yeah. you are attracting uh, partners in your life um, at that le at the level that you yeah. are, and uh, in the most cases they are toxic. Mm -hmm. So I I wanted to ask you uh, what can uh, someone do like for, for the listeners? Mm -hmm. um, what can they do to attract the loving and caring partners that they actually deserve? Okay, well the key is to create it first within yourself. Okay. Because if you don't create it in yourself, even if you see it, you won't know what it is. It's like, I will tell you, go after this fruit. 
and I'm describing you the fruit, but you've never tasted it, you've never smelled it, even though I can describe to you the color, let's just say it's a color you've never seen before. Okay. So even though I tell you to go after this fruit and you kind of have an idea in your mind, you still won't recognize it when you see it. Yeah. It'll just pass by you. <gasps> wow. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So then you need to create that example within yourself so you can see how it feels, the work it takes, the thought behind it. And then you will recognize it in the other person. You'll be like, oh, I'm thinking the same way. Yeah. You know, that's how you'll be like. You'll find many similarities. Mm -hmm. Rather when we have this trauma bonds, it's more so like the other person is everything we don't have. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so unconfident and I'm so attracted to this powerful person. But that's because you want to have within yourself that power. You're only associating with this person because you feel like you would get what they have by alignment with, with this person. Yeah, 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 I totally get that. And it's so true. Uh, but how can, can someone uh, develop and practice that self-love that you're talking about and what okay. self-love actually means? Okay, so self-love or love in general is taking something as a part of yourself, like feeling into it, seeing into it, hearing into it, creating this connection, this intimacy with that thing. And that would mean that since you have, like we talked earlier, more parts within yourself, you would have to take those parts as a part of the, the, yourself instead of rejecting them. Mm -hmm. So if you feel, let's just say, anxiety, the first thing in your mind and in my patient's mind is always, how do I get rid of it? Yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> but if you want to get rid of it, and love means you have to take it as a part of yourself, doesn't it mean you're hating on something that's within yourself? Yeah. So what you have to do is pull that thing closer and love it because it's showing you something it's protecting you for something and the intention behind it it's not bad you can just change the way it comes out yeah so basically love is being more kind and compassionate to yourself like even though you're not perfect just accept those imperfections because no one is perfect mm -hmm. so more or less, that's what self-love is. Taking something as a part of yourself and being more compassionate yeah. with yourself. Yeah. And regarding the thing with creating that example of a partner within yourself, just think of what you want in a partner and start applying in in your life. Oh, I want something, someone who listens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Then you try to see what's it like to listen to yourself all the time. Because mm. most of the time you're watching a show for a day straight and you yeah. don't just to avoid your thoughts or sometimes you're occupying your time with some drama in your love life also oc occupying your thoughts or oh I want someone to support me all the time then don't put yourself down some of the time support yourself all the time also yeah you know yeah because then you will see what's the effort behind that mm -hmm. and you'll recognize it when <laughs> you see it yeah Wow, when, you, you, you were just saying all, the, all these things and I got so many thrills <laughs> in me because I could see... Oh, you're so <laughs> I, could, I could see all the inner work that I've did in the past yeah. year, like since, since I was... Doesn't that feel so good though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that you're, you're actually uh, mm -hmm. saying it, I realized what I did, but kind of unconsciously. Yeah. And uh, it was actually... Uh, I was repelling any kind of partners in my life yeah. because I, I knew that I no one could handle me in a way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in the moment when I just started practicing daily affirmations on mm. seeing my worth and my value and just yeah. raising my confidence on a daily basis, um, I knew that if I'm ever going to attract someone, uh, it will be they will give me like the most support and yeah. it will be the right for me because I am doing that for yeah, me. Yeah, then you saw what it takes for yeah. you, for someone, which is also yeah. you, to continue and mm -hmm. to, what was the word you use? 
for someone to you said something earlier. handle yeah handle uh, so then you saw what it takes for someone to handle you and now you saw it and then bam when you saw someone oh yeah. this person is supporting me then that's on the right track yeah. basically yeah yeah but actually for me it was acknowledging the fact that i am ready to yeah um have a partner in my life because i know that i am worth it yeah so it, for me it was very funny because in the moment when i just written down this in my journal um after a week i attracted a partner that was exactly how, how i described yeah. it but it yeah. was just acknowledging that in the first place yeah yeah so i think for the listeners <laughs> if you want to attract loving and caring partners please just do the inner work first yeah. for yourself and don't don't expect something yeah. from another person to do when you're not doing yeah. it yourself that's true because then you're just gonna do nothing but create that dependency on someone yeah yeah um i have another questions here um on actually on the power and on on mindset because i think that Mm -hmm. um like given given the topic mm -hmm. um so many people experience anxiety and stress and anxiety is my favorite <laughs> <laughs> it's your favorite yeah. what do you mean <laughs> anxiety is my favorite because so many people think anxiety is a disease but oh it couldn't be more wrong it, anxiety is actually your inner wisdom Okay, <laughs> tell us more about it. <laughs> so, we all have this inner wisdom or this intuition, mm -hmm. right? And when you repress it, so intuition is strong. Yeah. Like it's some, it's a great power to have <laughs> intuition and active intuition. And more or less, we all have that little voice that like kind of guides us. And it's only little because we dimmed it down um or like our experience in childhood more so dimmed it down but imagine that inner power within yourself that's constantly being pushed down and obligated and forced to be dimmed down won't it at some point just erupt like a volcano and won't your hands start to shake and you couldn't breathe anymore and your heart will start racing <laughs> of course <laughs> and you will call it a panic attack <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> makes so much sense <laughs> yeah so always um for everyone who's listening always 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 the message of your anxiety is you're doing something you should not be doing or you're not doing something you should be doing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that easy and then you just have to adapt to, to it okay let's see what am i doing that i should not be doing mm -hmm. but what if he, it's something that you want to be doing maybe it's something new that you want to uh, pursue and you have that anxiety in yourself and you can't breathe because you're just overwhelmed by the emotions what what mm -hmm. can you do then because it means you're thinking of something that you should not be thinking okay so basically you're thinking like mm, let's say you're making negative projections about your dreams and wishes is that something you should be doing no obviously is your intuition telling you that yes of course mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like i'm not good enough for it or yeah. what with that will other and then you'll start me? getting the anxiety yeah, yeah like hey sure. this is not something you should be doing right now <laughs> yeah yeah i totally get that because <laughs> Like, I, I've experienced severe anxiety and yeah. panic attacks um, a year ago. Mm -hmm. But now I kind of manage it and uh, just observing it because I, I feel it in, in my yeah. stomach um, yeah. most of the time. So it's just, okay, so now I'm anxious. Why I'm anxious? What yeah. can I do to not be anxious? Mm -hmm. And what worked for me uh, was mainly to just uh, do breath work and yeah. to have like deep breathing where i'm just being in the present moment yeah um what what is something that you can do to just manage your anxiety and just do your thing well basically this is what i always recommend just see if this is the message mm -hmm. and you should follow up to that message yeah then just see what is it that you're doing that you should not or was it what is it that you're not doing and you should 
Mm -hmm. So, and then just put that into behavior and you will see instantly that your anxiety goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And regarding the mindset, because so many people uh, struggle with having a negative mindset, how can you shift from a negative to positive? Okay. Um, well, first of all, you have to, or you should, or you have the opportunity to realize that sometimes your negative thoughts are not your negative thoughts. Okay. Your negative thoughts are the thoughts of a part within yourself that's most likely likely there to protect you. Mm -hmm. uh, once you come to that understanding and you're like, okay, I'm not this person who thinks negative, but there is a little part in me that does. So then what can I do to help this part? And all of a sudden, you're not the victim of negative thoughts. You are the person who helps another side of you to overcome those things. Because after all, I can say whatever I want to say as a psychotherapist. If you're not the one helping, like you are the one who knows better what you need to hear or what you need to do in order to, um, to soothe that part within you. Yeah. So it's just acknowledging yeah um and that's how you also get into the power state because yeah. you're not the powerless one mm -hmm. you are the one that has the power to help the mm -hmm. powerless so that's how you um, so to say save yourself yeah um is there some daily practice that you can do to just shift that mindset because i i think everything lies in the in the habits that you have mm -hmm. um so if you have like some examples. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have this prayer that okay. helps me. It's like really short prayer and it's not e like you don't even have to say it to a God if you don't believe in a God or to the universe or whatever. You could just say it to yourself, but it goes, it, it does start with God. Um, it's just like this. Give me the... Um, Give me the courage to change the things that I can change, the peace to accept the things that I cannot change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. So then your mindset can change in realizing that, hey, there's some things I can change. I need courage for that. This is the resource I need. I will access it and then I can change those things. Then there's some things that I can change. What do I need for that? Peace. Okay, I will access like peace of mind inside of me and then that thing will also get better and then in order to know the difference i also need to use another resource so wisdom so i like this prayer because it's specifically telling you what resource inside yourself you need i love that and yeah. i love that this prayer actually uh emphasizes the fact that the everything is within us yeah and you just have to know how to access yeah that yeah. power you have because so so many times when you are feeling stressed or anxious or negative, you're mm -hmm. just going for external validation and mm -hmm. external answers. Yeah. Um, but instead, you should go within yourself. Yeah, It's also fine if you go outside yourself, but I would say the first person you should check in with is, is you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and this reminded me actually of another quote from Big Magic mm -hmm. <laughs> that said, uh, have the courage to show off the treasure that lies within you. Yeah. Uh, and that quote made me understand that actually I have a, yeah. a, a treasure within me that I, I have to understand how to, how to yeah. access that. And when you realize that, I think your life changes completely. There's a really beautiful story about this. It's like really, really beautiful. It says that at some point the gods uh, were playing hide and seek or something like that. And or like they were hiding their powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. The they were hiding their powers and they were just trying to find all of these places. But wherever they would hide, hide them in the mountains, in the sea, other gods will find them and steal them. So basically they hid them in humans. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the power of the gods lie in you and you just have to find it. <laughs> you have to get to it first. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's such a beautiful story. And I think that this is actually... Um, 
the the meaning of life to mm -hmm. say uh because like since i i read that quote three yeah. years ago when i read the book i just went on a self-discovery journey on finding out what's the treasure what's yeah. the treasure what what lies within me yeah. uh and i think this is the most important thing someone can do yeah um to just go after and see what they are capable of <laughs> yeah yeah uh, I have um, just uh, one question to ask you mm -hmm. um, for the end, and it is uh, what it, why it's important to practice gratitude daily? Because I know that you have your uh, own uh, customized agenda and yes. you have uh, like daily gratitude mm -hmm. uh, work uh, some people can just write down. Yeah. And I also believe that gratitude can make such a big difference in someone's mm -hmm. life. So I would love to know your thoughts on it. Okay, so the way I like to say it is that gratitude is the shortcut to happiness. So if you're ever looking for a shortcut to happiness, then gratitude is it. Um, how do you access gratitude very easily? Um, it's just you don't even have to force yourself to start appreciating things. You just have to look at things in your life and then think how would how much value they bring to you or what's their value and it could be like a little of a thing as a glass of water if you wouldn't have that glass of water you would have to drink out of the bottle or if you wouldn't have that bottle what would you do like you would have to mm -hmm. i don't know drink yeah. water from a fountain yeah. <laughs> and so on so then you start seeing the value in the little things around you and when you start seeing the value in the things around you you start appreciating them for that mm -hmm. thing that they're um, their role in your life and also another beautiful thing that happens is that when you see value in things you will start seeing it within yourself because you cannot see something outside of yourself that you yourself don't contain also yeah so yeah in this notebook that i created I, of course, wanted to have like a, a part of it that organizes and plans your day because I really, really need, needed that. Uh -huh. So I basically created it for my needs in a selfish way. But then I thought, hey, this might be useful to some other people also. And then I put these two practices inside of it that I feel like are very, very important to do on a daily basis. And then the first one that I recommend to do in the morning to start your uh, your day that way is the gratitude section with this moment of gratitude and just say a few a few things you're you're grateful for and then the one I recommend to do at night is the proudest moment within your day mm -hmm. because all of us like need some kind words some validation some appreciation someone to see that we did something really good. Mm -hmm. And the way I also suggest is not just saying, hey, I'm proud of you because of this. And it's also to be proud of yourself because of how you did it, because it took some steps to get there. And it's really important to also um, recognize those steps that you did so you can also get there, not just the end result, mm -hmm. because it's really important to see what is it that you did and what are the resources you used to get to that proud moment within yeah. that day? I love that. So just keeping yourself accountable for every small win and every small progress that you did yes. uh, so that you're just seeing the bigger picture and not only yeah. uh, the goal itself. Um, and how can you use um, such a practice to manifest your dream life mm -hmm. because i think that journaling in general is something that you can use to yeah in many ways but mm -hmm. uh regarding to manifesting your dream okay so the thing with manifestation goes like this yes you can be grateful for a lot of things and that obviously is this quote that says the more things you're grateful for, the more things you will get to be grateful for. Um, but there's this thing where you cannot really manifest something until you also become that thing. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just say if you want to manifest financial independence, 
first of all, you have to be grateful for the financial independence you have right now. Somehow you still have it. Even let's just say it's from your parents, right? And you don't see that as financial independence, but you could create something as little as, I don't know, just whatever little thing. So you can be start being grateful for that and creating, starting somewhere. Uh, then there's another thing. If you, if you have a limiting belief about something, it's very hard to manifest with having that limiting belief blocking you. Mm-hmm. So you have to solve that first in order to manif- manifest. But um, if you do solve the limiting belief that you have, and it's usually a fear about connection, the limiting belief always okay. and forever, that's what it'll always be. Um, it's usually like losing connection with something. Um then you just have to have the right vision for the future and make little steps towards it. And when you make little step towards it, I like to say that the universe likes to make a big step towards you. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, Because I think you gave such a powerful example on the financial independence because so many Mm -hmm. young people are are looking uh, to reach that point. Um, but how, like, if your parents still support you or you Mm -hmm. still don't have that financial independence, how you can feel that way already and attract it in your life? Ask for the money to be for something that you do specifically. So that way you would feel like you work for it, even though it comes from your parents. Um, can you give like a, a more specific example? Yeah. Uh, so let's say, I don't know, your parents are supporting you with something, but you would give something back to them. Like I would help you with this or I can do this for you. Mm-hmm. So that way you feel like you've earned it. Maybe you didn't earn all of it, but you did earn it and you will feel proud of yourself because you did so. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that could help. So um, in um, if you want to just maybe start your business or mm-hmm. um, start earning money uh, by yourself, how you can um, start attracting the money if you don't know what you want to do or you don't see yourself there yet? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, okay, so I would say that at the beginning, you would really... You know, there's so many ways you can make today money out of an idea, but somewhere you have to start. Like you you have to find something of value within yourself. And when you find something of value within yourself and you also see it as valuable, just imagine you have this, um, you have this place in the market, right? And you're having some tomatoes and Mm -hmm. some cucumbers and then you're thinking oh who wants to buy tomatoes and cucumbers no one wants to buy that these are horrible obviously you won't put them on the table and no one will see them and no one will buy them but if you just put them on the table even though it's some tomatoes and cucumbers then at some point some mother who wants to make a tomato salad or like a spring salad for their kids tonight will see oh tomatoes and cucumbers exactly what i needed and i can find them both in the same place here's some money for it and thank you very much so okay so basically you just have to find that thing of value within yourself that treasure we were talking about and just expose it mm-hmm maybe it'll take a hundred people that will pass in front of your table and will want exotic fruits Mm -hmm. and you don't have exotic fruits but maybe there's that one person who will buy all of your tomatoes today yeah yeah that's such a powerful example (laughs) (laughs) um but look in my case i Mm -hmm. i realized that what i value most of myself and people value in me is the energy that i give to them yeah um yeah that's a thing many people don't see that as valuable yeah yeah, it is but how how can you package energy like okay i'm interacting with someone and i give them motivation and inspiration and just a boost of energy that they need Uh, well just the way you do (laughs) (laughs) like how more specifically just Mm -hmm. maybe for the listeners 
um, you have like a good vibe and a very good energy that impacts people, how you can package that? Well, that's up to you because the way you package it, pack, yeah, package it and the way you specifically think of it, it's what will attract the best people for you. So you just do what you feel feel is the best yeah of course read get interested get knowledge in this uh like um financial education books it's a lot of them out there uh, i really like this one um it's called wait what is it seven habits of highly successful people, people. yeah that's a really <laughs> good one if you it's like a classic if you yeah. want to have some place to start um so yeah just get educated but eventually and the way you put it and the way you package it will attract the best people for you because maybe mm -hmm. others i don't know psychotherapists don't promote themselves the way i do and that's why i can notice i have a specific type of uh, people coming to me mm -hmm. with specific mm, situations that yeah are experiencing I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that we uh, are ending the podcast on an actionable uh, way. Just yeah. go and um, go after your dreams and trust yourself and see the treasure that lies within you. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good one. I love that. Um, if you have any thoughts for the um, audience of Elevate Her podcast, maybe you can share it with us. Um, okay <laughs> yeah well i would like to tell you that i think the most important thing you would need to know is that um, in order to build the life that you want to build it's very important to have um, an appropriate perspective over your past you know don't take it too lightly but don't take it too hardly and have a beautiful vision over the future because your future is meant to be created with your imagination not with your i don't know painful memories from the past so i think that's that's the path you should follow just create your future with your beautiful imagination i love that <laughs> and i love that we have uh, a similar vision on this because yeah. my my mantra is you are the creator of your own life yeah. so anytime i just I want to connect with my my higher power is just I'm, I'm saying that all the time <laughs> you yeah. are the creator yeah. so go and create the life of your dreams thank you so much Alexandra thank you, thank you was... Anna for having me thank you it was <laughs> such a fun time talking to you it was thank such you. a pleasure and I hope uh, all the listeners uh, got as much value as possible and took notes yeah, because I, so. <laughs> I am so 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 pleased that I have you on Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you so much for having me. <laughs>